10 Minecraft Rooms You Need in Your Medieval Castle Building castles in Minecraft is so much fun, but it's not always easy coming up with ideas to fill up all that empty space. So today we're going to go over 10 different room designs that you can use to fill up those large spaces inside your castle and make it look even more epic. Let's start this one with one of the most important rooms in a castle, that's right, the throne room. Now many throne rooms you will find are pretty grey and pretty boring, so I've tried to make this one look a little bit more colourful and a little bit more like what they would have done in medieval times. You see, they wouldn't have always been full of stone. There was colour, there was carpet and there were decorations. So I've tried to keep this one quite decorative and as you can see it's pretty red. We've got quite a lot of red. We've got our carpet leading up to our throne. We've got the red walls. We've got some decorations up on the side here. Now, of course, if you are doing this in survival and you use a room idea like this, I wouldn't suggest using Neverwrite for your armor stands. This is just for sort of showcase purposes. But I would suggest putting some armor stands there, maybe with some iron armor or something like that, because I do think they really add a nice sort of feature to the side of the walkway here. If we come up to the throne here, the throne is pretty simple. It's made with dark oak and we're using stairs and slabs and a few full blocks there just to give it a nice sort of shape. We've got some red wall and a red bit of carpet just on top there with a red banner to give it a bit of backing. And this adds a really nice feature. And I've done this sort of throne design very similarly many times now. And I've got to say, it's one of my favorite designs. I think it really just fits and feels kind of in line with the size of the player. We've got some flowers at the side and I've alternated them each time we move over. So we go from the ferns to the white tulips to ferns to white tulips and all the way down. The ceiling design, we've got this kind of curved arches and they're kind of done like beams going all the way across the ceiling with a simple kind of uh, little, I guess it would be a kind of chandelier sort of type thing. But it's quite simple, done with lanterns and fences and a chain in the middle to make it look like it's hanging. But it's a pretty simple design, but gives the effect that we're looking for. Next up, we have a library. Now, I have tried to keep this one pretty open planned, as I have done with most of these designs, which is not a way that I'm used to working. But I figure for a castle, you're going to want to have plenty of room. You know, these builds are going to be very open. So I try to make good use of the space, but without making it feel too cramped. To the side here, we've got a little kind of reception for our librarian. He would take note of any books that people are taking out, who's took them. And then I guess just behind us, if we take a look here, this is all of the returned books. Over here, we've got a few little tables and then some little kind of reading areas. Nice and simple, nothing too much. Just, you know, just a nice little quiet area for people to read. We've got a fireplace. Now, I've got to say, this is one of my favorite fireplace designs, but it's a very simple design. Simply placing two stairs on top of each other at the side. On the top one in the middle, we place an upside down one and then a normal one on top. And again, we just repeat the same pan at the side here. And of course, using a campfire underneath as our fire. Now, do bear in mind, guys, a lot of people seem to think that campfires can burn down wood. They can't. They can't burn anything. Only normal fire can actually do that. So if you do place down a campfire, you haven't got to worry about anything burning down. Now, we've got a little area underneath the stairs here. Just a few little books and a little storage area. Nothing too much. And another little bench here for sitting down to do a bit of reading if you want to be sort of in a little quiet area. Here we've got the mass collection of books, as you can see, we've got loads of them all going up here. And then we've got a little keg in the corner just to grab a drink for those that might be a little bit thirsty. I have a dry throat. There's a flower pot there to make it look like a cup. Now, heading up the stairs, first of all, I've added a dark border here. Now, it's not something that I always do, but I do think it looks pretty effective when it's done right. And as you can see, with the dark oak and spruce, it kind of fits in really nicely. Just adds a nice little break on the edge there just to kind of give it a nice finish. Up on the wall here we've got a window. I've tried to basically imitate some curtains and a curtain rail. As you can see we're using the light grey and grey banners. And then across the top there we've got some signs to kind of imitate a bit of a kind of curtain pole. It's not necessarily perfect but I think it does the job. Up here we've got a little kind of uh, table unit. And then a few pictures on the wall. One thing that I think gets really underused is pictures. 
Now, I gotta admit, I'm not a fan of all the pictures. Some of them look really silly, but the small ones like this, I do think fit in really nicely. Um, and these designs do look a little bit better than some of the others. We've also got a little fireplace upstairs, which I think looks pretty nice, matching the one that we have downstairs. And then a nice little area for reading. We've got a bunch of books up here, a little table with a few little decorations. It's fairly, you know, fairly well lit up. I mean, we probably don't have to put all these lanterns up here, but I've just tried to keep the design replicated across. The ceiling, again, is very simple. We've just used some upside down stairs to kind of make a little kind of groove in the ceiling. And then just followed that inside the edges of our beams. And overall, I've got to say, I think this fits really nice and it's probably just about the right size to fit inside a castle. You know, as you can see, it's nice and big, it's open, so it should fit well with any kind of castle design. Next up, we have one of my favorite rooms, and I'm not going to lie, I really love the way this one has turned out. It's got such a warm, kind of a welcoming feel to this room, and that is for the Feast Hall. Now, as you can see, we've got a table down each side of the room here. This would be where all of the soldiers sit to eat. And as you can see, the table design is pretty simple. We've basically got some upside down stairs on the end with slabs running all the way down and then some upside down stairs at the very end again. Making sure those upside down stairs are one further past the last um, chair. And the reason I've done that is because it gives us a little gap on the corner so we can see that the chair slides under and kind of just makes it feel a little bit more real. Now, with that being said, I've done another design down here again. So this time we've gone with a picture with a flower pot. And then we've gone with a gold armor stand. And we've basically repeated that all the way down the side, all the way to the end. And we've also got it on the opposite side of the wall as well. So we've got it all the way down here as well. At the front here, we've got a few chests just for storage. I mean, there's no real use for these. Just a bit of storage for whatever. And then we got the walk that brings us all the way up to the king's table. Now, at the sides here, we've got a little decorative planter. And then we've got the king's table just here, which i got to say is pretty cool. I really like the way this has turned out. So again, it's just a simple design, the same kind of style table. But at the back here, we've got some bigger chairs for the king, queen, and the king's right-hand man. So for these, we've basically got slabs. Then at the back, we've got two trap doors. And then on the trap door, we're facing a red banner. But for the king's chair, we have added some extra signs at each side just to give him... A little bit of a nicer chair, so we have some armrests. And then at the back there, we've got some more armor stands with a few ferns. And it's just, again, for, decor for decoration purposes. But, of course, if you're in survival, I would suggest not using the Neverite stands because it might take you a while to gather that up. But other than that, I think this room is looking really nice. Probably one of my favorite ones that I've done. I love the ceiling design as well in here. We've got this kind of different arch if you look we've got the kind of arch that leads over from the pillars and then underneath we've kind of followed the same design just a little bit higher going into the roof there which just i don't know it creates a really nice look as you're kind of walking through you know it just gives that really nice sort of ceiling and i, I don't know there's something about the design in here that feels really cozy and warm and that's what i like one room every castle needs is a bunch of storage rooms so this storage room is kind of, I guess, a bit more like a junk room. This is kind of like a cellar. So a room you'd come down the stairs and they'd be hidden somewhere out the back. As you can see, with the storage on the shelves here, I've kept it a little bit random and left a few spaces as well. And what this does, this creates a nice kind of jumbled effect so that it feels a bit more like a storeroom. I think it doesn't look as effective when you pile in too many of the same items. So as you can see, like I've only placed one anvil, one stone cutter, um, one grindstone, just a couple of crafting tables, a few beehives, a few campfires, some barrels, some flower pots. So there's quite a lot of stuff here, but it's quite randomized. So it doesn't look too cluttered and it looks very different as you look across it. So I think it gives a really nice effect and works really well for storage. For the shelves, we've used some trapdoors and some slabs in between our pillars. Just simple and basic, but it gives a nice effect and kind of does what we want it to. Over at the side here, we've got some more storage underneath our stairs. A few flower pots over here. Maybe, you know, these are just like backup flower pots in case any in the castle get broke. 
We've got a bit of a beer keg here, and I gotta say the honey works great as some beer in a keg there. Uh, just being sort of cut, sort of leaks out of the tap into a little thing for people to top their cup up with. And yeah, overall I think it looks really good. Now one thing you'll notice with all of these rooms that I've done, I've used terracotta for the walls. So if you're designing walls like this, you're gonna have to make sure that you have that extra layer on the inside. So you will be losing a bit of space. But losing a bit of space for a bit of color in your builds, I think, makes a huge difference when it comes to looks. I mean, it looks so much nicer having some nice color to look at rather than having some stone brick walls or something. You know, it just adds a little bit of color and just that hint of style to it, which I think looks really nice. Over this side here, we've got some blast furnaces and some smokers some campfires a bit of storage and just a little bit of an area here nothing much just, you know this is pretty much just designed to be a kind of storeroom just a little area for putting some random bits and bobs maybe coming to do a little bit of work here and there for little things next up we have another really cozy room here this is a wine tasting room somewhere where the king would come maybe with a few guests or a few other people maybe a few of his soldiers or his lieutenants just to have a little drink and to try a few ales out and stuff like that one thing i try to do with these builds is play around with some of the block colors as you can see we've got some green terracotta for the walls which i gotta say gives a really cozy sort of feel to this room and then we've gone with the stripped spruce logs, which we're going to use a sideways one and then one facing up. And we've done a sort of checker pattern with it. But i got to say, it gives a really effective floor pattern. I really do like the way it actually looks. And it fits really well kind of in this style room. We've got a little table here for the king, for him and his friends to come and have a drink at or some of his men. And in the center of the table here, I've used some wall to make it look a bit like a table runner. Add a little bit of a sort of feature to the table and just makes it look a little bit more royal. We got candles, some turtle eggs and some flower pots to look like cups. And again, we're going with some of the chairs with the big backs. We've got a slab, two trap doors and then a banner on there to make it look a little bit more royal and a little bit nicer. To the side here, we've got some barrels with some sort of alcohol for the king to try and some of his men. So maybe there's a few different flavors there. We've got ourselves a fireplace in the middle here. As you can see, this fireplace is slightly different, but very similar. So we've basically got two upside down stairs, the bottom one facing from this side, the top one from this side, two slabs in the center, one above on the next block, one on the top half of this one, and the slab down here. Very simple design, but overall, I think it looks pretty effective. We've got a moose head at the top here. This is just simply using some stairs, an upside down stair, trap door a full block and then another trap door just at the top there and then some fences to make some horns and overall it gives the kind of effect it's not great but it does give the effect that we're kind of looking for over here we got a little bit of a kind of i guess a kind of wine rack all the different barrels into sort of a bit of a rack as you can see there's a few missing and there's a few with some taps on that are ready to be used we've got our chandeliers in here again and as you can see, the roof design in here, again, is different. As you can see, we've used four blocks and slabs to curve an arch. And then we've got a beam through the center. As you can see, it's a little bit lower, so we've got slabs above it. But it gives it a really nice effect as well. So I really like the way this ceiling looks. I think it does look really cool. Um, and yeah, overall, I've got to say, this is another room that I really love. Very cozy, and it's a bit more open than how I usually build. So I really do like this one. Okay, I may have gone a little bit overboard with the red in this room, but I gotta say, I think it looks pretty royal. So in here, this is the king and queen's bedroom. As you can see, we've got a nice rug design at the front here. We've basically got our red carpet going around the edge with our never walk block in the middle, which I think gives a really nice effect and the two colors work really well as a rug. We've got a nice little fireplace over at the side here. Again, this one with a bit of a different style. We've got some upside down stairs at the bottom with some wall blocks. Stairs at the top, an upside down stair in the center, and then one on top. And then just in front of our campfire, we've got a acacia trap door. Just to add a little bit of detail there, and I think it works pretty nicely. Over the side here, we got some storage cupboards. Nothing in there, but you can put anything you want in there. You could put some chests, some armor stands, or anything like that. We've got a little sideboard unit over here. Some more cupboards at the side here. Then the bed here, we've got a pretty big bed. So basically we've got four 
stripped uh, dark oak pillars in each corner or one pillar for each corner. We've used white wool for the pillar with some snow blocks on top. Then we've used mushroom blocks for the bed covers. And just to make it look like it's folded over at the front here, I've placed a little bit of carpet. And it just gives it a nice effect like you kind of as if you folded the cover over to make the bed look neat. And I think it looks pretty good. Around here, just we've got some slabs just to kind of make it feel like it's kind of blocked in as a bed with some stairs and trapdoors at one end. To make the pillars, we have got the sandstone walls, as you can see, and then they go on to, again, another block at the very top. On the very top here, I've put some red carpet and then some red banners all the way around the edge. The red carpet at the top here is a good idea because that will stop any mobs from spawning. But you shouldn't get none spawned now anyway, not with the new 1.18 mechanics, but just to be safe, it's always a good idea. We've had some little lighting at the side of the bed, which I think looks really cool. Just a simple fence and a lantern. And then over at the side here, again, just a little bit of storage with some shelves and stuff. And over this side, we've got a bit of a bookshelf in case the king or queen want to read a book when they go to bed. Next up, we have a kitchen slash pantry. So for this one here, again, it's a little bit smaller than the other room. So it is a little bit tighter, but still quite open plan. You know, there's still quite a bit of open space here. We have a workbench as you come in the room. This is where we place our food. It's going to be served to some of our soldiers and stuff. We've got some flower pots, which are cups and some food waiting to go on the stove here. As you can see on the campfire, we've got some raw meat over here for the stove is very simple. We're using our bricks. And at the back there, I have dug down one block to add our campfires. So on the block above, on the top half, we've got the iron trap doors. And that allows us to put iron frames with some meat in on the top here. So it looks like it's actually cooking something, which is pretty cool. Up here is the kind of kitchen area. We've got some smokers, a sink, some more smokers here, some cupboards with some storage. Uh, we've got a little keg behind us. And then if we come around here, we do have a little storage cupboard. Again, a bunch of stored goods in here. We got some cakes, some food, some potatoes, carrots. And then we got some storage here again for some potatoes and carrots. We've also got some herbs hanging upside down on the wall there, which I think look pretty cool. Outside here, we got some flower pots with some saplings, which look pretty good for herbs. You know, these look like fresh herbs in pots, which I think look really cool. And then again, it's just a bit of storage here and there with the odd shelf, the odd keg and bits like that, just around to make it feel like a kitchen. And overall, I definitely think this one pulls it off with a very nice look. So this room again has a lower ceiling and we've gone with a stone sort of floor here, as you can see, using a combination of stone and a site and stone bricks and gives it a nice kind of worn effect. Over this side here is the kind of work area for the weaponsmith. As you can see, maybe over here, he would craft some of his weapons. Over here, we'd have a Fletcher, maybe crafting up some arrows and stuff like that. We've got an area for smelting our iron ingots an anvil and just overall a nice little work area one thing i think looks really cool and that is the levers here they look like kind of hammers in a way you know so it kind of looks like they could just pick up the hammer and then bang out a bit of metal and so forth again we've got a little bit of uh, sort of sort of shelf in decorative areas nothing too much just a few bits here and there and the ceiling is very similar in here again going with that timber kind of beam look and i think it works really well to the side here, we've got a couple of armor sort of stands on display. Nothing much, but just kind of indicates two different sort of styles of armor that you can get done or get your sort of repaired. Maybe it's somebody's actual armor that is waiting to be collected. A place to put our coal and our iron ingots. A little shelf again for a bit of decoration. Over here, we can store all of our ores, which we would smelt into iron ingots and some coal for, uh, for using for the furnaces and stuff. Some water cauldrons to put any of our weapons that have been heated up and banged into shape to cool them down and to make them sort of solid again. Overall, I think this room is a very simple styled room, but I think it definitely feels very fitting with a castle. And again, I've made it a bit more open planned than what I usually build. And I think it works for this room. You know, this is the kind of room you would need quite a bit of space anyway. So I think it works for this design. 
I think we can all agree that every castle needs a dungeon. So here we have a dungeon and I've decided to do something a bit different. As you can see, I've incorporated a bit of wood here. Now, I usually do dungeons all grey in stone bricks and stone and whatever. It just becomes grey and boring. So this kind of makes it feel a little bit nicer. I like the look here. We've got the stripped dark oak logs for our pillars and for the beams across the ceiling, which really breaks up all of the stonework. The walls are made of tough and mossy cobblestone. This gives us a different texture to the floor, so it kind of just feels a little bit different. The flooring, of course, is stone brick, stone, andesite, and mossy cobblestone. The mossy cobblestone gives a nice look of kind of dampness, makes it feel a little bit run down, and, you know, a little bit more fitting with the dungeon. We've got a few spots where it's overgrown. Maybe we're in a basement of some sort, so we've got some leaves and vines growing through, maybe a bit of moss. Just to add a little bit of uh, a little bit of life in here, make it feel a little bit run down. Um, but yeah, I think it looks really nice. A little bit of storage. We've got a barrel over here or a keg, if you like, for a drink for the soldiers in case they get thirsty. We've got a few spots with some chains on the wall. Maybe a place where they might torture or question the prisoners. Looks like we've already had a pathway here. They've got a little bit of blood splat on the floor. One of our prisoners may have been taken. And as you can see, each cell is made up pretty much the same. We have the trap doors at the back there with a piece of white carpet on it for a little pillow. We've also got a cauldron and some water in it with a little light inside. So very simple, very basic. So it fits pretty well. We are using iron bars on the front here, but I have got my texture pack enabled, which I forgot about because um, the iron bars do look black. But in a normal texture pack in default, these will be gray and will still look just as nice. Up this end, we are holding some of the worst criminals in this world. I mean, these guys are just pure evil. I mean, look at that guy's face. If that ain't a criminal face, what ain't? But yeah, overall, I think this is a really nice design for a dungeon. Definitely splitting up with a bit of wood definitely adds a variety in the color and definitely makes it feel a little bit different and not so gray, you know, because gray really does become boring after a while. But overall, I think this is really cool and one of my favorite designs that I've done for a dungeon so far. I don't think any castle would be complete without a vault of some choice. So here we've got two gates to come through. As you can see, we've got a first gate and a second gate. And just as we come in here, you can see the first one we've got is our armor stand. So we've got our gold, our diamond and our netherite and our netherite tools and a totem of undying. So a nice little kind of display in the center here. We've got some gold over at this side here. Again, just some gold blocks and some gold ore with some amethyst um, crystals on it, which I think looks pretty cool. We've got our emeralds stacked into barrels over here. Then if we turn all the way around over here, we've got our diamonds all again stacked into barrels and then our open diamond blocks and diamond ore over here. So it looks pretty cool. It's not a huge sort of display, but I think it looks pretty neat and quite decorative at the same time. So I think it looks pretty cool. We've got our lights on the wall this time, just sitting on top of a, a fence post. And we haven't put them in the ceiling because we've got them around the room, which I think actually looks really nice. I quite like having the lanterns up on the wall like that. It's a nice little sort of style. A few little paintings just for a little bit of detail. But yeah, overall, I really like this. And of course, we've got the red carpet coming all the way down, leading into this room, which again adds a nice... I don't know, just a nice little difference here. You know, normally these again are just little tiny rooms and I wanted to make it just feel a little bit more decorative than usual. And uh, I think this does the trick. And if you enjoy these interior ideas, then you might like these ones just here in this card. So be sure to check those out too. And I'll catch you in the next one.